Hey everybody, Boris Schlossberg from BK Forex. Welcome to our weekly Forex technicals for 324 to 329 of 13. Dollar ready to drop. As always, past performance is not indicative of future results. Trading Forex carries a high level risk or may not be suitable for all investors. High degree of leverage can work against you as well as for you. And before deciding to trade any leverage for such products, you should carefully consider your investment objectives, level of experience, and risk appetite. Possibility exists that you can sustain a loss of some of your initial investment, and therefore you should not invest money you cannot afford to lose. You should be aware of all the risks associated with trading on margin and seek advice from an independent financial advisor if you have any doubts. The information, including commentary and trade ideas provided on bkforest.com, should not be relied upon as a substitute for extensive independent research, which should be performed before making investment decisions. BK Forex LLC and bkforest.com are merely providing this information to your general information. The information and opinions presented do not take into account any particular individual investment objectives, financial situation, or needs. All investors should obtain advice based upon their unique situation for making investment decisions, should tailor the trade size and leverage of their trading to their personal risk capital. BK Forex LLC will not be responsible for any loss in current investments made by readers and clients as a result of the information contained here. We do not render investment, legal, tax, or other professional advice. And if such investment, legal, tax, or other professional advice advice is required, the service of a competent professional should be sought. Well, the week ended, I think, um, on a quasi positive note for the euro but if you look at the euro here it still remains uh, with the unfilled gap after a week's worth of trade so we really get to next week uh, is really going to be a very interesting uh, situation because we're either going to leave this gap unfilled in which case it becomes a very negative prospect and the euro um marginal line the key line of break here is going to be 2850 so if we turn back down and start breaking 2850 line that should provide a very very negative background picture for the euro if on the other hand we start uh the week uh relatively strong and we can recapture and fill this gap then the euro sort of uh faces bigger challenges as it goes up the real true challenge here for the euro is to clear not only 3050 not only to clear 3100 but to clear all the way out to 3150 that's the key level you would need to to, to have in order for the euro to have a, a reasonable chance for a full recovery still very much in this uh, channel but again um, at a point I think of, of, of critical resolution so a break here that fills that fills the 3050 gap right over here um, could create further pause and, 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 and back and fill but at least creates I think a relatively sound foundation on the bottom here a turn back down and a break down below 2850 really opens up a run all the way out to 2700 and we have a uber bullish move which is unlikely but we might have a possibly uber bullish move of a short squeeze then the real test is how far how far it can, it, it can travel and the the cap here is around 3150 on, on the uh, on the upper bullish impulse I have to see how everything resolves next week but it looks um it looks definitely interesting in this. and one of the key things i think that's going to happen is uh you will have more volatility as we get the resolution of the price next week now pound definitely uh uh acting much better than the euro we did have a little bit of a flutter um on Friday because of the downgrade of the UK debt but it was uh, one of the interesting things as you can see is a tremendous amount of value proposition it was instantly bought back up pound cleared the key let's go back here into the uh, pound cleared the very key 5025 level basically right around here if you look back on this this is essentially the gap fill right so it cleared the you know it cleared the gap fill uh, next week the really interesting um, look is going to be the 53. That's really the big overhead resistance here. So if we get more and further power to try to push us through 53, that would be a very bullish impulse and really opens up a move to recover all the way out to the 55 break. If, on the other hand, we start to stall here, start turning around, then the next support level, uh, as has been for really all of last week and the week before, is the 5100 level. So we have a possibility here to sort of... Um, definitely stall out because we certainly have some overhead resistance here but if we clear the 53 overhead resistance you know strong move up it's a very bullish impulse and allows us uh, the opportunity to project out to 5500 we start to stall and sort of turn around the gap would have been filled and you would you have the typical sort of back and forth filling um uh, price action with 51 again forming a pretty solid base here just look at the solid base of the 51 form um last week and that seems to be the near-term support that i think is going to be operating in place as we go forward on the dollar yen situation um the structure is is we've been saying the structure is negative 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 i think it's actually going to become even more negative as the week progresses there's a couple of fundamental reasons behind this one is the japanese repatriation it's the end of the uh 
um, Japanese fiscal years, a tremendous amount of repatriation. Um, and therefore, we're seeing basically lower highs continuously. We're really about 95 now is the new is the new resistance level of, on the overhead side. Um, although what is interesting is that there is a tremendous amount of uh, support here at the 94 level. This was a value a point. This was a value point that people bought. The key thing is this point goes, then I think we really have an opportunity to move all the way down to 93s, 92s. We have a much bigger distribution in dollar yen than people think. And given the fact that this, this, this trade has been bought so hard, it's not at all impossible to see it unwind and, and shake out some of the week longs um, as the week progresses. So watching a downside bias in dollar yen um, and seeing how well it performs. Um, on the flip side, to, to really negate the downside bias, you have to take out the 96s. So we'll have to see if that's possible, but um, it doesn't seem to be um, likely at this point as we have a continuous downward pressure on the pair. But if we're totally wrong, bias really gets negated at 96, and then we have a potential move right back up, and this just simply becomes a, um, um, uh, a consolidation phase. For right now, this 94 is a much more primary key level that you should be watching as a potential breakdown for further downside action in dollar yen. Aussie dollar running into a stall here, this 104.50. Uh, we cleared, we, we talked last week about how 104.15 was, was a key level. That cleared, it gave us a burst all the way out to 104.50, where we're starting to stall out here as that level over here is sort of becoming a new resistance. Even though when you look at the charts, you look at the sort of longer day charts here, you see that, um, well, there is choppiness here, but really, the, the the resistance level, the really big resistance level, is around the 105.50 level. So you would think that you know if we can clear, I guess uh, I'm looking at 104.75. That's probably the key level here. A breakthrough 104.75, 104.80 does open up this potential run towards the 105.50 as the next uh, leg up. Um, otherwise, we kind of curl over, come back, and retest the 103.50, which is the support level that's been holding. That is the primary support level now um, in the in the Aussie. Um, lastly, I kind of want to look at the Kiwi because Kiwi had a big breakout this week, uh, looked very, very strong, and is now well off its base of 82. Over the long run, Kiwi is still pretty much trading this 82, 84 range, but the fact that we have such a powerful move, ending, ending really close to the highs, um, this really leaves us open to the possibility of a test of 84s. 84 does have some resistance, so it's unlikely that we're going to get much past that, but ultimately on a very, very powerful path towards a really strong move towards the 85s. So Kiwi definitely worth a look as a potential power breakout move. That's how the week shapes up. I wish you guys the best of luck and the best of trading. The key levels you get in the euro, 28.50 to the downside. In the yen, 94 to the downside. In the pound, 52.50 and above. Takes us to 53. We're, we're sort of, this whole 52, 50, 52, 50, 53 is going to be the stall level. But above 53 really clears the way for much further price action. And um, in the Aussie, 104.75 opens the way for us to go to 105.50. Wish you guys the best of luck and the best of trading. This is Boris Schlossberg, over and out.